A flashpoint emerges between the U.S. and Israel. Amid reports of intense violence in the West Bank, the Biden administration is slated to impose sanctions against the IDF's Netzai Yehuda Battalion for alleged human rights abuses directed towards the Palestinians in the West Bank. Now, this would be the first time the U.S. would be imposing such sanctions on an Israeli military unit. The sanctions will reportedly lead to banning the battalion and the members from receiving any kind of U.S. military training or assistance. The report drew a sharp response from Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who has hit out against the sanctions plan, saying he has been pushing against the move in talks with American leaders. What cabinet member, Benny Gantz, said, and I'm going to quote him here, we have great respect for our American friends, but imposing sanctions on the unit is a dangerous precedent and sends the wrong message to our shared enemies at a time of war. The sanctions come after growing violence by Israeli troops in the West Bank. 37 Palestinians have been killed and 68 injured in the past 24 hours itself. The ministry added this in a statement. Now, Israeli forces launched the raid on the Nur Shams area near the Palestinian city of Tulkarm on Friday. The Israeli army released a video that it claimed showed its operations in Tulkarm. Hundreds of Palestinians marched in a funeral procession carrying the bodies of the two men killed in the settler attack on the village of Akraba in the West Bank. Now, according to the mayor of Akraba, some 50 armed settlers attacked members of his community and fired at the Palestinian youth, killing two of them and wounding others. The Palestinian, the Palestine Red Crescent Society said soldiers blocked its ambulances from reaching the area and tending to the wounded. The latest skirmish is just one of the incidents that has taken place in the recent past. The West Bank, which Israel occupied back in 1967 and has occupied since, has seen a surge in violence in the past year, particularly since Israel's war on Gaza erupted in October last year. All right, uh, to discuss this further, we are being joined by Scott Lucas, who's a professor of international politics at Clinton Institute, University College Dublin, joining us from Birmingham. Uh, Mr. Lucas, uh, welcome to Weon. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Now, so this is the first time we'll see U.S. sanctions of this kind. Will this cast a shadow on that ironclad American support for Israel? Um, the reason I say that is that although this action is dramatic, is very, very limited. Uh, the sanctions, as you mentioned, are on one Israeli Defense Forces unit, Netza Yehuda. Uh, this is a battalion which was created for ultra-Orthodox Jews. Um, it included many uh, settlers, Israeli settlers from the West Bank, who were known for, let's say, extremist views against Palestinians. Um, and it was already uh, held responsible by the Israeli military for a series of abuses in 2022. In addition, the unit had actually killed a U.S. citizen, uh, an elderly man, in January of 2022, and it had been redeployed from the West Bank into the Golan Heights uh, in occupied Syria. So this unit was already, in a sense, considered an outlier in the Israeli military. What was significant, but is not really being reported as much, is that several other Israeli units uh, were being investigated by the Americans. And indeed, a State Department panel had recognized that they be recommended that they be sanctioned as well. And Secretary of State Anthony Blinken turned down that suggested suggestion saying, oh, these units have, uh, have already reformed themselves. So the Israeli leaders are going to make statements that, uh, you know, they, they will not accept this. Benjamin Netanyahu says it's a red line. The most important statement, I think, is from Benny Gantz, the war cabinet member, when he says dangerous precedent. In other words, it's a signal back to the Americans, which is, OK, you know, you've done it against this unit. We recognize that it's an outlier, that it's one that, that we already have punished. Don't don't yes. sanction other units as well. Uh, Mr. Lucas, now, I just want to come to what you just mentioned. Now, the Israeli leadership said, and I'm just going to quote her, imposing sanctions on our soldiers is a red line. Now, when we talk about that red line, what sort of a reaction can one expect from Israel against the U.S. here, given that they're dependent, given their dependence on American weapons for the ongoing war? Uh, a lot of chat. That's all you can expect, because remember that even as this action is being taken, 
the U.S. House of Representatives uh, passed a bill yesterday authorizing almost $20 billion in further military assistance to Israel. Um, you know, if the United States government really wanted to limit the Israeli military, rather, you know, whether it was in its actions on the West Bank or perhaps more significantly uh, the mass killings in Gaza, it would restrict military aid or even cut it off. But there's no sign that the U.S. government is going to do that. Uh, there's no sign that the U.S. government is going to uh, take action to demand uh, an unconditional ceasefire in Gaza. So, you know, the, you know, the, the Israeli government for its own people was going to have to come out and say this is unacceptable. Uh, but the, the current, albeit tense, U.S.-Israel relationship is going to continue where Israel has space for its military operations, especially in Gaza, uh, even if the U.S. Is, is saying to the Israelis, look, you, you really need to rein in the extremist settlers and rein in your military in terms of the violence against those who are in the West Bank. Uh, Mr. Lucas, finally, I also wanted to get your thoughts on this. Now, there's no denying the fact that there are certain cracks emerging between the U.S. and Israel partnership that we have been seeing. And recently, we saw the U.S. not going in for a veto, did not veto the call for a ceasefire at the U.N. Of course, that was something that Israel was not at all happy about. And of course, now we're hearing about talks of sanctions. What kind of pressure do you feel it now puts on Netanyahu, which is now coming from the American side, the closest ally Israel has at the moment? I think the key issue is actually going to be whether or not Israel proceeds, or specifically Prime Minister Netanyahu proceeds with the assault on Rafah in Gaza, where you have up to 1.5 million of Gaza's 2.3 uh, uh, citizens who are living there, crowded there, trying to avoid uh, being bombed or being attacked. If the Israelis were to do that, I think that would cause a serious question for the Americans, where they might have to finally come out in open defiance. But short of that, I think the biggest challenge for Netanyahu is not the Americans. The biggest challenge are going to be his own people. Uh, after all, we are now uh, you know, well into the seventh month of the Israeli response to Hamas's mass killings from last October. Yes. We have more than 34,000 Palestinians dead. But there's no sign that the Israeli military operations are succeeding in getting rid of Hamas. And I think that puts pressure on Netanyahu from Israelis who say, look, when is this going to end? Yes. All right. That was Scott Lucas, professor of international politics from University College Dublin. Thank you so much for sharing all your insights, sir. Thanks to you and your viewers.